This is Josiah Plays Dead Synchronicity. Tomorrow comes today. This is another adventure game for January. It's about, I don't know, the apocalypse or something, some sort of time bending weirdness. I don't really know what it's about, but it looks intriguing. So we're going to check it out. That's about all there is to say about that. Racing for impact, making absolutely sure of the locations of all access to the secret cow level. It's a good idea, Knox. Uh-oh. The last game we played that was in association with Daedalic was not that great. That was Alcatraz. In association with Daedalic is Daedalic saying, We didn't make this. We just gave them some money. That's it. This is riveting so far. All right, lots of people died. Everything is descended into shit. War, pestilence, the whole apocalypse thing, I guess. Wake up, Michael. Come on, you have to wake up. Okay, we're Michael. You have to run to the bank with your aunt, you'll be back in 45 minutes. That's cool that you and your aunt are doing a fitness activity together. Try not to run too fast. She might not be able to handle it. See you when you get back, explode. Uh, he wakes up one of these days. So much hope. I'm kind of hoping I don't. After that little text prequel, my hopes are not currently high. Fitness activity of me paying my rent. Paying rent is usually a good idea. Who are you? Who's there? Please, Michael, wake up. Wake up. Why am I this hearing... silence. And this darkness. Where am I? Damn it. I can't... I can't remember. Where are you? Where are you hiding? Michael, please wake up. You have to wake up. Michael? Is that my name? Please tell me where I am. I I can't remember anything. This guy's quick on the uptake. You don't understand what I've just been through. Smack that soldier for me, right? Alright, this is weird. Uh... What's happening? What is this place? Please, tell me! Wake up, Michael. Please, wake up. Wake up now. Don't go! Uh, please! Uh, come back! Come back! This silence. This darkness. This emptiness. This woman was like, okay, I'll do it, but I'm only going to record one line of dialogue. You just have to keep reusing it. Not recording any additional lines. They're like, no problem. We'll just use that one line every time your character has to talk. Uh, is this my briefcase? A lot of darkness. Here's an oil lamp. Act one, a camp full of rats. All right, break out the paintbrush. Good morning. I hope you're feeling better. Excuse me. Uh, but... Now don't be alarmed. 
I'm glad you feel strong enough to get out of bed. That's wonderful news. I must say you're looking much better, considering what you've been through, of course. Who are you? Ah, yes, of course. Forgive my manners. You've been with us uh, for so long that I forgot that you don't know who we are. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Rod Atkinson. I'm, well, I was. I was the director of the municipal property registry before, well, no. you know, no. before the world collapsed on us. Ah, uh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Atkinson, but... I'm sorry, if your name is Rod... And you're not a porn star, you have fucking missed your calling in life, and failed. You're not allowed to be called Rod and not be a porn star, that's it. It's just... It's just a fact. YOLO, you only line once. See what you did there. <laughs> yeah, the desert rats. Alright, I already want to punch this guy in his face. What am I, a fucking revenant? I look like a revenant. The story of Halith Gark. Where am I? What is this place? You are in what I venture to call our home. Our humble, hopefully temporary home. This is one of the many trailers that make up the refugee camp. And believe me, we can consider ourselves lucky to live between these four walls. Most of the inhabitants of this hellhole, excuse my crude language, have nothing more than plastic tarps and cardboard for shelter. Wait a second. Did you say refugee camp? Yes, of course. The facility for temporary accommodation of disaster victims is what they called it. You know, after the army declared martial law following the catastrophe, you look a little confused, if you don't mind my saying so. Do you really not know what I'm talking about? I, I don't know. I'm afraid not. Let me ask you. This guy's got some very believable voice acting. Yes, in ordinary day-to-day -day life, I talk like I am narrating an encyclopedia. Can you tell me what I'm doing here? Yes, of course. I think we owe you an explanation. A few days after the Great Wave, we found you lying in a ditch near the airport. You were badly injured and unconscious. We couldn't just leave you there. Someone had already stolen your luggage and identification. It was awful. So we decided to take care of you ourselves and brought you here. You've been with us ever since. By the way, I should tell you that when we found you, your clothes were ripped to shreds, so we threw them away. Werewolf. The clothes you're wearing now are mine. You'll find more things in that wardrobe. If you need anything, just help yourself. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson. But... The fuck is the Great Wave? The Great Wave? What are you talking about? Well, what would I be talking about? That damned... Excuse my language explosion that brought ruin to all of us. The origin of this filthy new world that now seems to be our permanent reality. But do you really not remember? Do you really not remember anything about all this? I feel a little weak and dizzy, Mr. Atkinson. Excuse me, I'm afraid I can't. Yes. I can't remember a thing. Hmm, I see. There have been many cases like yours in the camp. Try to rest and not to get too agitated. Well, there's one thing I can tell you. You can consider yourself fortunate. There's nothing nice to remember about recent times. Believe me. I love... I love... Uh, 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 amnesia protagonist games. Some of my favorite games have amnesia protagonist. The game that I'm making right now has amnesia protagonist. Amnesia protagonist is great! It can never be used too often. I think you should have amnesia in every single game. Just... Every game. Amnesia. Because it's so good. I'm just pretending... Did you say hamnesia? I can't remember what pork I've eaten. Just you know, I had a bacon... Barbecue bacon chicken sandwich they have from uh, Burger King right now. It's pretty fucking good, actually.
Uh, oh, that rascal. You said, with us. Who else lives here? Ah, yes, of course. I still haven't properly introduced my family to you. Now is a bad time, but I promise to make proper introductions later. My wife and I sleep in the other room, and, well, little Colin sleeps with us. Colin? Yes. Colin is our only child. Our one ray of hope since the catastrophe. I'm going to confess something to you. Colin is the only reason my wife and I still struggle to keep going in this new world. We would have given up a long time ago if it weren't for him. Of course. I understand. So that was your wife's voice that woke me up a few minutes ago, right? <laughs> my wife? No, that's impossible. My wife has been with me in the other room the whole time. We haven't come out of there for hours. But I'm glad you're feeling better and are fully conscious now. I guess we could say you've been reborn. And although the circumstances aren't the best, simply being alive nowadays is practically a luxury. So, welcome to our home. Maybe his wife has weird radio telepathy. Fucking Colin. In before Colin is actually like 35 and he still sleeps with them. <laughs> From what you've told me, I see that you've saved my life. I'm very grateful, Mr. Atkinson. No, please. You don't have to thank us. We just did what we had to. It's our moral obligation to uphold the ethical principles of civilization in this new world. Okay. But call me Rod, please. I won't, no. And, well, we also did it for Colin, you see. What kind of future does he face if we accept that it's every man for himself that no one cares about anyone else. It's a terrifying prospect, don't you think? We're just doing whatever we can to avoid that future, that's all. Uh, mm, mm. Wow. Rod! Rod! Please excuse me, but I have to leave you now. <laughs> no, wait, please! What's happening? Uh, don't go yet! I'm sorry, I understand that you have a lot of questions to ask me. But now isn't the time. Believe me. I promise to answer each and every one of your questions in peace and quiet later. Sorry, but I have to go. Uh, Rod, please, quickly! Okay, all right. Now that you're feeling better, you can go out and take a walk around the camp. But please, be very careful out there. The world you knew before is gone. Heed my warning, don't touch anything. Don't talk to anyone, and don't get mixed up in anything. At least until someone explains to you how things work in this new world the Great Wave left us. Everything has changed so much out there. All right. Thanks for the advice. Ah, one more thing before I go. Okay. You've been with us for quite a while now, and we don't even know what to call you. What is your name? My name? Tequila Michael. Sunrise. My name is Michael. Very Hi. pleased to meet you, Michael. We'll talk again later, I promise. Michael. That's what that disembodied voice called me. That must be my name. Wake up, Michael. That's all she said. Leaving me in this immense void where I can't remember anything. Great wave? New world? Refugee camp? But what the devil could have happened out there? I think it might be a good idea to go out there and take a look. You hear the guy in the other room. God damn it! I've told you a million times. Stop masturbating in the living room. Wow. That walking animation is solid. I'm very scandalous. There's a lot of little purple blobs I can look at. I got nothing in my inventory. I guess I'll save the game. What do we have here? We've got a rumpled sheet. The scrap of fabric has traces of blood, sweat, and other fluids I can't even identify. If this sheet was ever white, it must have been a long time ago. A very long time ago. Well, look at that. When I pulled back the sheet, part of it got torn on the spring sticking out of the bed frame. I hope Rod doesn't notice. 
The bed frame under the mattress is so battered that one of the springs is turned into a very sharp protruding object. Let's make a shank. A depressing sight. A damp mattress and a bed frame and dirty rumpled sheets. This is the bed where I've been convalescing all this time. This is something that apparently is key to adventure games, is your character has to just constantly monologue to himself. The mattress still shows the imprint of my body. I must have been lying on it much longer than I thought. A depressing sight. This is the... This spring sticking out of the bed frame is as sharp as a knife. Better not touch it. The bed frame under turned into... It's an unframed snapshot, stuck directly on the wall of the room. Two adults and a child, smiling at the camera, in what looks like an enormous yard. One of them is Rod, my host. It's an unframed snapshot. Two adults... Can't take the photo. The old closet Rod told me about. It's funny. With the glass and the door shattered, my reflection in the mirror is fragmented, like a photo ripped into little pieces and taped back together. Like in the dream. The old closet Rod turns like a photo. Impossible. It's locked. I'm afraid my host forgot to unlock it before he left. Mm-hmm. Hey, if I just break this lamp, there should be a key in there, right? This oil lamp is the room's only source of light. The flickering of the flame makes the room look ghostly, like in a dream. More like in a nightmare. I'm not going to snuff out this oil lamp. This place looks sinister enough with light. The light from the oil lamp fills the room with shadows, and that damn flame never stops flickering in the shifting air currents, although the alternative wouldn't be much better, being in complete darkness. This oil like in a I'm not going to snuff it out. I didn't say snuff it out. I said take it. I can hear people whispering on the other side. It's the door Rod went through after hearing those moans. The same one he made sure to bolt shut. <laughs> yeah. Too much scandalosity out there. I can hear people whisper the same. It's no use. It won't open. I heard Rod bolt it from inside. He literally locked us in here. Nothing creepy about that. A pile of frying pans, plates, and dirty silverware waiting to be washed. Ugh, this place smells like a cheap, greasy spoon. Wait, there's an oven in here. Am I locked in the kitchen? A pile of frying... Ugh. With the glass in the door broken, and that thick coating of grease lining it, I doubt anything's been baked in this oven for a long time. With the glass... I doubt... With the glass, I... Nothing edible. It's only the lid of an enormous metal pan sitting on the bottom of the oven. Hmm. There's a very worn old notebook hidden under the lid. The cover is practically falling off the spiral binding. It looks like someone stashed it here some time ago, and then forgot about it. Inside an oven, the safest possible place to store books. It's a bit dented. It was used to cover a very large roasting pan. In fact, it still has some traces of food stuck to it. I really hope I can wear this on my head. I don't see anything here that could be covered. I don't see anything here that could be covered. There's literally a fucking pot right there. The oil lamp is the only source of light in this part of the trailer. Better not fool with it. I might end up in complete darkness. Hmm. If I want to open up the closet, this isn't the way. Better not. The squeak of the protruding bed spring scraping against this metal lid would grate on my nerves. Use this here? How? Use a little imagination, Michael. I don't see anything here that could be covered. It's a bit dented, in fact. It's an old accounting ledger Ooh. that still has a few blank pages left in it. From what's written in here. It looks like someone was using it as a diary, before ripping out almost all its pages and leaving it inside the oven in the trailer. Inside the oven? Who leaves fucking paper inside an oven? 
He's been talking to his grandparents again. To my dead parents. His absences are getting longer and more terrifying. I see dead people. His mother is suffering too much. We agreed to put the gun inside the cookie box with two bullets in the chamber. God forgive us, but when he's gone, there won't be any future for us. The rumble coming from that gash in the sky still terrifies Colin. The exalted one has decided to tear open the sky and is urging his angels to punish us through the wound. That's what Reverend Blake says. He's a holy man. That doesn't sound like divine butter. This guy sounds more like bitter quip than Sardic. The exalted one has decided to tear open the sky and is urging his angels to punish us through the wound. Jubilation! Totally bitter quip. My stuff, my staff, my colleagues, my superiors. Don't anyone out there, doesn't anyone out there remember Rod Atkinson? We have to be strong for the boy. We can't let the great, great wave strip us of who we are. I'm afraid no one can find this evidence. The oil lamp is better enough. I took it out of here. Why would I want to put it back in? I don't think I'd gain anything. This wardrobe isn't mine. I better not leave anything inside. I just don't see it. It's difficult to find a different use for this notebook, other than writing in it. Listen, Michael. Hmm. I'd only end up scratching or breaking it. Best to leave it alone. I'm afraid I can't do that. I can already tell this guy's gonna be a pain in my ass. Casually striding. Oh. Good God. What the hell happened here? Rod was right. I don't know what hit this place. But whatever it was, it struck it to its very foundations without any mercy whatsoever. What's happening now? You better hide, dude. Don't you know that it's dangerous to show your face when the cleanup brigades come into the camp? You're new here, aren't you? Yeah, you could put it that way. Well, welcome to your new home. I'm Hank, but everyone calls me the Hunter. I'm... Michael. But what's going on up there? Nothing, Mike, just routine. The cleanup brigades are taking away a sick person, a dissolved. You know how it is, just doing their job. Ironically, that house belongs to one of the camp moles. Those traitorous scumbags. Brigades, dissolved, moles... I don't... I don't know what you're talking about. I can't remember anything. Oh, I see, you're a blankhead. Well, you better get up to speed real quick if you want to survive here, Mike. Find me if you need help, dude. I can get you whatever. I need you help right now. No matter where it is, how fast it runs, or where it tries to hide. That's why they call me the Hunter. All right. I'll remember that. Come back here. Don't take her away. Don't you know who I am? Come back here. Ah! <gasps> it just aced that dude, and he was one of the moles working for them. Shot that poor man in cold blood. Why did they do that? Hey, uh, Hank? Thanks, Hunter. I think it's a, a little weird that during those scenes... I'm afraid he's gone. The voice volume is like 9999 times quieter than normally. Um... Um... But... What's happening? What is this? What the hell's going on here? Yeah! Good God. I think I'm starting to lose my mind. The actual fuck was that? I saw something fall off. Was that like the past? Or the future? Or some alternate timeline or some shit? Search for invisible cows, indeed. Wow. Well, this trailer seems a lot bigger on the inside than the outside. This is some sort of like magical the enormous trailer that serves as a home for Rod and his family. I find it hard to imagine this heavy old monstrosity ever traveled on a highway. 
This doesn't look that enormous to me, though. It looks about 15 feet long. In another context, this relic would be ready for the scrapyard. But here, Ron's trailer stands out like a mansion amid all these tents, plastic tarps, and pieces of cardboard. The enormous trailer, I find it hard to imagine. What the fuck? Now I'm spying on Cookie Box gun in there. So Colin is sick? Hmm. It's hard to see clearly through all the grime on this glass. On the other side is the room where Rod and his family have locked themselves away. Hmm. It's on the other side. Ron seems upset and worried. What's going on in there? Ron seems... From here, it looks like one of those metal boxes for Danish butter cookies. And judging from how worn it looks, I'd say that it's been reused over and over again. Danish butter. Quite the opposite of divine butter. From here, I'd say... On the other Danish butter is what you get if you pray to Sun Gniff. And you will regret it. That's Rod's wife. I heard her calling him from the other side of that door that just closed behind him. She looks worn out with those dark circles under her eyes. She looks like she hasn't slept in days. She has a porn addiction. That's Rod's wife. She lo That must be little Colin. Rod's son. He looks unwell. Was that him I heard moaning in pain inside the trailer? Sure, we'll go with that. That must be a little... Was... We'll go with that. Hey, motherfuckers. How about I just start potting I don't see anything things? here that could be covered. It doesn't look... I don't see anything... I prefer to hold on to it. I don't see anything... Fine. Thought maybe I could start banging the pot lid on the window, but that would be weird. It's the lot outside Rod's trailer. The ground is covered with trash, scrap metal, and broken glass. Something tells me it might not be a good idea to walk around here barefoot. Why am I barefoot? It's the lot outside Rod's trailer. Something t Because I needed the stuff out of the... Wardrobe, but it's impossible. I'm afraid it's locked. This wardrobe, it's no use. I can't knock on this and be like, Hey, motherfuckers, uh, I need the key to the wardrobe so that I can. You know, not be barefoot. Throwing this out there. Don archetype footwear issue. This tangle of metal was a driver's door once upon a time. So far, this doesn't seem like another gibbous. Time has left these hinges bent and rusted. There's no way I'm going to be able to break open this door with my bare hands. Of course not. This tangle neglect. This neg The half scrap remains of a sports car that looks like a collector's item. From the style, it must have been worth a pretty penny a long, long time ago. But now, I'm afraid it's just scrap metal. Through the windows, I can see the dashboard and the seats. It's funny. Despite the chaos on the outside, it seems like time has stood still inside the car. The half scrap remains, but now time has left these hints. There's no way. No, no, no! I don't want to. Ouch! Damn it! I managed to rip open the sole of my foot in a rusty nail. Yeah, knew that hey, was gonna happen. It's not good to walk around barefoot in this enormous trash heap. You won't get very far without shoes. Thanks for the tip. 
The tip is yours to keep. But if you come near my things, you're a dead man. Understood? Wait, I recognize you. Aren't you the guy Rod's been taking care of in his trailer all this time? Yes, I am. Do you know Rod? Of course I do. Everyone in the camp knows Rod. You owe him your life. Don't doubt that for a second. Nowadays, no one in his right mind would do what he did for you. For a total stranger. That's what that poor devil is like. A sitting duck for the wolves of the new world. Yes, I'm very grateful to him. But tell me, can I ask you a few questions? Question one. Do you have a cure for tetanus? Because I'm gonna need that shit. Tell me about Rod Atkinson. Well, I don't know him very well, but they say he's decent enough. Too decent for the times we're living in. <laughs> Did you know that before coming here, he was someone important? I think he worked for the government, and he still has some good contacts on the outside. But they're not good enough to get that stupid do-gooder and his family out of here. Stupid do-gooder? Well, you know how it is. Rod is one of those good Samaritans who think they can save the world. He has helped a lot of people in the camp, but I think he's going to run into problems. I reckon that he's too weak for these times. I don't know how long he'll be able to survive. You said he had a son. A pretty good reason to hang on, don't you think? Ah, uh, yes. Colin, I haven't seen that kid running around here for some time. Do you know if he's all right? I don't know. I still haven't seen him. His father told me about him. I did well, see him. Well, I'm glad he's not anywhere near me. <laughs> that brat doesn't have anything better to do than to try to snoop in my shopping cart. This fucking guy. This shooting. Could you explain to me what just happened here? Explain what exactly? That show the cleanup brigades put on? Someone got <laughs> too chatty and ratted out a sick person, that's all. There's usually a pact of silence in the camp. No one likes to see one of their own in those ambulances. But in this case, the dissolved was a relative of one of the camp moles. Ironic, isn't it? But they shot a man. Yes, so they did. So what? <sighs> The price of human life has gotten a lot cheaper lately. That needn't surprise anyone these days. They're like the guys from the division that go around killing everyone because they think everybody's sick and infected, and like burning everything. Um, well, I think those guys might have been called the cleaners too. I can't remember what they were called. Oh, I'm yawning a bunch for some reason. Did you say dissolved? Did you say dissolved? Of course, it's dissolved. But what the hell's wrong with you? Those people are a real plague. They're sick and, so they say, highly contagious. Let me give you a piece of advice about them. If you see one, Run the other way like he was the devil himself. Even if they don't give you that <laughs> deadly disease or drive you crazy with their trances, the cleanup brigades will kill you for hiding one. You saw it with your own eyes. They don't even respect their own camp moles. Yeah, you run out of camp moles and how are you going to dig tunnels in the camp? A camp mole? What is that exactly? A spy. A stool pigeon. It's in the army's interest to control the camp from inside. And so they pay some of the inhabitants to feed them information about what happens on this side of the fence. Who mm. comes in? Who goes out? Who causes trouble? And, of course, who gets sick? They're scumbags, but very well-paid scumbags. And they have certain privileges that no one else in here has. Never trust a mole. 
They'll do anything to hang on to the favors the army gives them in this hellhole. Okay. I'll take your advice. You're welcome. But stay away from the shopping cart or I'll rip your guts out. Got it? What's this about the Great Wave? I mean, it's hard to imagine that uh, the world ended because somebody made a really great play at a football game and the crowd got really excited and they spontaneously started doing the wave and boom! End of the world! I've been hearing about an enormous explosion. The Great Wave. What on earth are they talking about? What? What kind of question is that? Where have you been all this time? Sleeping in a cave? Well... You could say that. The Great Wave is the reason we're confined here like animals. The entire world went to hell in a handcart that day, and we went with it. Well, I'll be going on my way. Good luck to That's you, That's it? I'm not going to ask you. Just any. be sure to stay away from my things. I'm not going to ask any follow-up question. What's the Great Wave? Ah, the Great Wave caused the end of the world. Okay, no further questions about that. I guess I don't need to know. Any specifics? Well, I just fucked up my foot. Oh, I'm definitely gonna mess with this guy's stuff. 100%. First thing. Messing with this guy's stuff. A supermarket shopping cart full of plastic bags. Ready to burst. This individual who looks like a bum never takes his eyes off it. And the swarm of insects fluttering around the merchandise don't either. Overflowing, dirty, and infested with flies. This will be Diogenes' dream shopping cart. Okay, let's not start do dropping Diogenes. A supermarket this in and the... <laughs> hey, you! Don't even think of putting your paws on that shopping cart! Stay away from my stuff... Or I swear, I'll rip your guts out with my bare hands. Okay, okay, that. calm down. <laughs> I won't touch anything. Except I kind of will. Someone improvised a bonfire inside that drum. Although the smoke starts to irritate the lungs pretty quickly, it seems like the only heating system the camp inhabitants have. That's odd. The drum has a huge bullet hole on one side. Everything indicates that it was being used for target practice. Someone improvised it, although it seems... Hmm. This individual seems a little unhinged. Nothing strange about that, considering what this place is like. And judging from his threats, I don't seem to have made a very good impression on him. He smells like liquor and urine. And he's made it abundantly clear I shouldn't go anywhere near a shopping cart. Hmm. And... Can I ask you a few questions? I'll answer anything you want, as long as you don't get near my stuff. I'm kind of near your stuff now. Can you tell me- Okay, the great wave hit us one Friday afternoon right out of the blue. I remember it perfectly because I'd just come out of an important meeting at that precise moment. I'd made a lot of money from a very fat contract. Yes, sir, Bob. Very, very fat. <sighs> First, we felt the ground quaking, as if a volcano was about to erupt right under our feet. I had to get out of my car and run. Then came the explosions. Glass broke. Buildings toppled. And then for weeks, the stench of corpses rotting in the streets. In just a few hours, <laughs> that damn great wave sent us all with our businesses, our money, and our convertibles Straight back to the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages? Of course! Are you surprised? In a matter of minutes, we were left with no electricity, no water, no communications. And after the initial chaos, the dissolved started to show up. And that horrible gash opened up in the sky. That Stupid breach up there that no one in this hellhole has bothered to explain to us. The fact is that the remains of the old system only held up for a few weeks. 
And through the cracks, what you see around you started seeping in. The new world, right? Yes, indeed. You catch on fast. The new world was here to stay. Welcome to the future, son. Not exactly the way you pictured it, huh? Now there's less flying cars, that's for sure. Could you explain to me what the shooting was about again? Explain what exactly? That show the cleanup brigades put on? Someone got t There's usually a pact of silence in the camp. No one likes to see one of their own in those ambulances. But in this case, the dissolved was a... But they shot him. Yes. The price of... Let's talk about something else. Well, I'll be going on my way. Good luck to you, pal. Just be sh Okay, so we're living in a bit of a shithole. Seems that things have gotten... You know... A bit problematic. Unfortunately, there's no... Bitter quips running around. Oh wait, there is. We need to find this guy, Reverend Blake. He sounds like he'll be an entertaining person. A bunch of shacks, trying valiantly to stay standing in a sea of mud and trash. I can't imagine how it must be to live in one of them. Nothing but leaky roofs and cardboard walls that would blow away in the wind if they weren't tied down. Good God. The very look of this place is disheartening. Sounds fine. A bunch of shit. I can't. Sounds fine to me. I was born for this apocalypse. What if I put this on here? I'm afraid there's already way too much. No. Let's see. I could swear that the lid is just the right size for this drum. Perfect. Damn it! What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> this damn shithole is going to be the end of us. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> person can't even breathe in this hellhole anymore. <laughs> I routed all the smoke directly onto him. What's Someone going improvised on? now that I've covered the top. The smoke coming out of the bullet hole on the side is concentrated, <laughs> making it act like a chimney. Someone now that I've this filthy shithole is going to what, be. What now I can mess with this cart, maybe? Because he's I'll have to do this quickly, before this man stops coughing. Well, let's see what we have here. It's kind of a dick move. I don't see anything but rotten food, tattered clothes, and trash. Anymore. Wait a minute. It seems like there's also a small billfold with a bunch of credit cards. Those would be useful. What the hell is this guy doing with so much plastic money? A person can't I have even no intention of putting my hand back in there. There's that's nothing else in that shopping cart that interests me. Kind of like spittoon Overflowing dirt. A supermarket, this individual, and the swarm. A person can't I can't even, even take the lid back off. Anymore. I pretty much just fucked this guy. Also, just to steal his wallet for no good reason. So I'm some kind of fucking sociopath in this, obviously. These are the charred and misshapen remains of a bank card. I doubt anymore. it can be used in this condition. Assuming there's anyone capable of finding a cash machine working. I don't think doing this... Yeah, but you know what you this could do with it? Probably nothing, but... Let's use this credit card to bust open this wardrobe. What could go wrong? Let's see if I can do this. This is really gonna work? Really? Good. The mechanism gave way on the first try, but the card is trashed. For my sake, I hope that guy outside never finds out about this. <laughs> wow. The label says single malt scotch whiskey, and the seal on the cap is still intact. The label says... 
a high-proof whiskey, and by the looks of it, an expensive one. The bo I suppose that a high-proof the bottle was hidden in Rod's closet. I suppose that hidden. despite his apparent strength, that man needs to escape his problems from time to time. Pillowcase. A clean iron pillowcase. Nothing like the grimy sheets on the bed I've been lying in all this time. A clean iron. Nothing. Yeah. Pillowcase time. White, folded, with a scent of fabric softener. It's sad, but this pillowcase is the nicest thing I've seen since I woke up. A clean iron. The fabric of our lives. Open or closed. This closet transmits the same sensation of decrepitude and neglect as the rest of the room, and the rest of the refugee camp. Open or closed, and the... Finally some shoes. At first glance, I'd say those old loafers are too big for me, but Rod offered me any clothes I might need, and I don't see anything else around here. Open or closed, and the... After my experience out there, I don't think I'll be running around the refugee camp without these on my feet. At first glance, but Rod... Hmm... Not just yet. I'm grateful to Rod for his hospitality, but these old shoes don't look very clean. It won't take more than a few hours for the wound on my foot to turn really ugly. And the last thing I need now is a serious infection. Being serious right now? Are you literally being serious? Hmm. It won't take... A high-proof with the bot, I suppose that... For now, it's just a pillowcase. I don't see any point in soaking it in liquor. I'm not going to waste the whiskey on this. That would only make a puddle in the closet. And those shoes wouldn't be much cleaner than they are now. But what about using the whiskey to disinfect my wound? No question. This is the fastest way I can think of to unleash a disaster. <laughs> what happens so no, I'm not going to do it. What if I throw this whiskey onto this oil lamp? What could go wrong? Treating bed spray. Hmm. Okay, let's see how well this protruding bed spring can cut. By slashing the pillowcase, I've been able to make some strips of white fabric. These bandages don't smell bad, and they're as clean as can be expected in a place like this. By slashing the pillowcase, these ban I use a little of what's in the bottle to soak the bandages. Right, so you couldn't put the whiskey on the pillowcase, but after you tear the pillowcase up, now you can put the whiskey on it. A handful of bandages soaked in scotch. I guess I just came up with a homemade antiseptic. Perfect for cleaning and disinfecting wounds. If you can stand the awful stinging, that is. A handful of... I don't see how I like, use them on myself, though. Maybe I can just use them on the shoes now. Here goes. I'll use the bandages on my foot. I hope the alcohol is enough to keep it from getting infected. Let's pray this improvised remedy doesn't lead to a delightful case of gangrene. What bastard put a lid on the drum? He just you figured it out? <laughs> suffocate me, you bunch of assholes! I think that guy out there just discovered the reason for his sudden coughing fit. Some coward in this shithole wanted to suffocate me! Me! Who was it? Who was it? Come back here so I can give you back your lid, you son of a bitch! Did you hear that noise, Rod? What's going on out there? I don't know. I'll go have a look. Of course, now he'll come in I here with the key. I think it's that poor key. drunk who's always hanging around the trailer. He's kicking up a fuss again. It's a good thing poor Colin can't hear his insults. Don't ever <laughs> say anything like that again, Rod. I'm sorry, honey. I wasn't thinking. Pan shot. <laughs> so we handle our first puzzle. The how to get some fucking shoes puzzle. Wait a minute. There's that moaning again. What's happening in that room? What are you doing here? Get out of here! You've no business being in this room! Rod, I I'm sorry. I. Sometimes there's some real weird musical but choices. What's going on? 
Get out of here, Michael. You didn't see anything. Understood? Out! Out! Oh, I get it. They have to cover up the fact Excuse that... my outburst, Michael. I shouldn't... I shouldn't have behaved that way. It's not like me. But this new world brings out the worst in all of us. It's just that I can't stand to see Colin suffer this way. So for your own good, please stay away from this room. Away? Why? It's no use trying to hide it. You're bound to find out sooner or later. Colin is very sick. Right. And the authorities claim his illness is highly contagious. Highly contagious? Is he one of the dissolved? Michael, I won't let anyone use that word in my house. <sighs> yes, Colin <laughs> caught that damn disease. Right, so he's one of the dissolved, so they have to keep it a secret or the cleaning squad will come and kill him. I get it. And what exactly does the disease consist of? I don't know, Michael. No one really does. The only news is what the army brings us. They say the disease is highly contagious, and it's our duty to turn over all victims to the cleanup brigades. But no one has ever come back after being carried off in one of those ambulances. No one. So we can't let them take Colin, do you understand? Yes, of course I understand. They say that all the victims are condemned, that there's no salvation for anyone, that at the end of their suffering, and their trances lies certain death. I think that even the army is afraid of the victims. Really strange things happen around them, Michael. Things you wouldn't believe. The fuck? It's a disease that turns you into a prophet. Hmm. Okay. What, what, what are you talking about there, weird man? What things happen around people infected with the disease? Strange things, with no possible explanation. In their trances, they... They go places, Michael. They bring back information. They know things. They talk to people who are no longer with us. And we've been living like this for weeks. The things that are happening around Colin are getting more and more confusing and hard to bear. Talking to the dead? Jesus. This man's nerves are shot from the exhaustion and stress. Uh, I'm probably infected. He's really not kidding. That sickness is a calling, 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 calling card for the cleanup brigades to come. <sighs> wow. How did he get infected? By stepping on a nail. But how did Colin get infected? We don't know. No one knows how the disease is spread. The only thing we know is that the disease appeared after the catastrophe and that it's spreading like wildfire. So the Great Wave brought the dissolved with it? Yes, but don't use that word again. Not in this house anyway. It's so cruel and disrespectful. In effect, that's the only thing we know for sure about all this insanity. The Great Wave took everything from us and left us with this epidemic. What's happening to Colin is terrible. If only there was something I could do. Well, Michael, you can help us. I'm convinced that our finding you was no coincidence. It's You've convinced. got to help us. Gotta help them. So it's like the zombie apocalypse, except that instead of turning them into zombies that eat flesh, it turns them into crazy prophets or something. That's weird. But you said yourself that all the victims are condemned. What can I do? No, all is not lost. In the camp, there are rumors of a cure. It seems that in the city, on the other side of the fence, the victims have access to a drug. But we can't get it here. And my contacts out there, well, let's just say they can't do anything to help. There's always going to be a rumor of a cure. People are always going to make this shit up that they're hopeful for. There ain't no fucking cure. So there's a drug that can cure them? Yes, but they say that producing it takes a long time and is very expensive. And so it's reserved for city dwellers who can afford to pay for it. Get us that drug, Michael. I beg of you, please. 
Colin's time is running out. Mm. Getting involved looks dangerous. I saw that shooting out there. There's also the possibility of infection. Infection? Are you afraid for your life, Michael? Without our help, you'd be dead right now. Dead. Wow. Don't forget that. Well, on that card. What's more, I could help you in return. I could help you get back what you lost, don't you see? Give me back what I lost? But you hardly know me, Rod. I know the essential part, Michael. I know that you're a blankhead. Blankhead? Mm, that's rude. What the devil does that mean? A blankhead is a person with no memories, who can't remember anything. It seems that the Great Wave had an enormous neurological impact on certain people, Michael. You're not the only one, or even the worst case. There are people who even forgot how to talk and how to walk after the explosion. Some ended up dying of starvation. They forgot what food looked like, how to chew it, even that eating was a necessity. You can consider yourself lucky. You still remember how to keep yourself alive. And that's the important thing. The natural recovery process is slow. It can take months, if at all. Listen to me, Michael. A man without memories is just a shadow. Or even worse, he's nobody. I still have some contacts out there. I was an important man in the municipal government. I could trace your name, your data in public records, your fingerprints. I could restore your whole life in the blink of an eye. But please, help us. But literally none of I'm that matters help anymore. Right. And for everything you people have done for me. But listen to me, Michael. We know that it's possible that our son is condemned to die. In fact, my wife and I have everything prepared for when he leaves us. Our child is the only thing that keeps us holding on in the new world. Nothing would have any meaning for us without him. So if there is even the slightest chance of saving him, we are prepared to do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Please, Michael, help us. Mm -hmm. okay. For God's sake, listen to him. He's just a child. Rod, come in here, quickly! Bring us that cure, and we'll help you get your life back. Colin is our only hope in this new world. Help us save our future, and I'll give you back your past. I promise you. Don't really give a fuck about my past. Goodbye, Michael. No, Rod, wait. Bring a drug? Is he out of his mind? That man wants me to put his son's life in my hands? I can barely remember who I am. And I probably wouldn't last more than a few hours out there. But Rod was right. A man without a past is nothing more than his shadow. He offered to help me get my life back. My memories. So if I want answers, I have only one possible course of action. To get that drug. It's just a thing you made up to say, or he did. A, a man without a past is nothing more than a shadow. Oh yeah, that seems true. Or, you know... He's just a dude that can do what he wants. I mean, we're in the apocalypse. All that past shit doesn't even matter anymore. Like that bum outside. How much good is his past doing him? I ask. Let's clean these dishes. To be frank, it doesn't seem like a very good idea to be spilling liquor around here. Don't call him dissolved, you blankhead. Yeah, I was just thinking that. We are not allowed to say dissolve, but apparently calling people blankheads is fine. Apparently it's just fine to call people blankheads. I'm not going to sniff out. Okay. Wait a minute. Before leaving, I should write down everything important I find out in this notebook. Updated it might come in handy if, as Rod says, I'm one of the blank heads the Great Wave left in its wake. Nice. Got the journal going. Rod promised me he'd help me recover my past in exchange for the drug for the dissolved. I mean, this is now evidence that I'm acting against the wishes of the army that's in charge. Why the fuck would I write that down? Hi. If you find this after searching me and looking through my shit after you know, doing a regular search of me, guards, just want you to know that I'm planning to illegally smuggle a drug from the city into here. 
to give to one of the dissolved who I'm currently harboring without telling you also. And, and let's make sure I write down everything I'm doing here that could possibly be used against me in a world where they just shoot people. Hmm. Unless I'm writing it in Elvish and they can't read it. Got a real brainiac here. I want the gun from that cookie box. Oh, you rascal. Well, if you go to dinner with me, I'll give it all back to you. Yeah, I guess it's that simple. Shopping cart, eat burning drum. I have no there's no He smells like liquor and urine. Can I ask you a few questions? I'll answer anything you want. Mm. Well just It's bright in this guy's day. I don't think it's a good idea to offer him a swig. The guy's already pretty unhinged. Okay, fine. Be a dick about it. Hmm. Oh, you rascal. A quick glance at these tents is enough to make you realize how forsaken these poor people are, confined against their will inside the camp. It seems like these jumbles of plastic and fabric represent the typical housing of the inhabitants of this hellhole. How have they managed to survive like this for so long? What are they eating is a good question. A quick glance can... What? Damn it. What's going on? It's amazing. Everything's changing again. Everything. Everything is mutating. And I haven't even moved. I don't understand. I don't understand anything. I must be one of the dissolved, right? Because having the weird visions. Although it looks hastily and shoddily built, it's surprising to see a brick and mortar building amid all these shacks in the refugee camp. No doubt this must belong to someone important or with very good contacts in here. Although it looks hastily, it's a no doubt. Oh, you rascal. So there's multiple ways out of here I can go. It's the enormous fence around the perimeter of the camp, with surveillance from the towers and on the ground. This barbed wire fence intensifies the feeling of claustrophobia in here, making it even more suffocating. It looms there at the edge of the camp, like an impenetrable wall. Has anyone ever tried to escape this rat's nest? It's the enormous fence. This the horizon. In the distance, you can see the skyline of the city. It doesn't seem that far away. From what people say, things work somewhat better there. Could that be true? Smoke and dust clouds are still visible among some of the taller buildings. The impact of the Great Wave must have been terrible. I wonder what shape the catastrophe left the city in. In the distance from what people It looms there at the... Well, I guess we can go up and try talking to these guards. I'm sure they're going to be like, no, go away. You don't have a passport or, you know, whatever. And then I'll have to, like, go around in here and do some shit to be able to get past them. You don't need to see my identification. Dozens of bullet marks and some trails of fresh blood dripping down the wall. Oh my god. This corner of the camp stinks of gunpowder. This is for the firing squad. Dozens people. of bullet... Oh my... Where do you think you're going, rat? 
No one leaves here without a pass, unless it's with a bullet between the eyes. Yes, and we can take care of that for you if you don't get away from that gate. Come on, scumbag, stick your neck out. We could use a little entertainment tonight. <laughs> What's the matter, Rat? Cat got your tongue? I think it's best if I get away from the gate. I'm afraid their threats are deadly serious. Sorry, guys. I'm not looking for trouble. Now that's what I like to hear. That's a good boy. I wonder if the game will literally let me get murdered a bunch. Joe Science. What part of the words get lost don't you understand, rat? You'd better have a good reason for getting that close to the gate, rat. Sorry, sometimes I'm a little hard of hearing. I'm moving away from it. What part? You'd be. So. I don't think they're actually gonna kill me. The barbed wires. It looks like the army wanted to make it very difficult for any. You can see bits of. Cl Oh no, here comes that sensation again. It's like floating in a dense liquid while everything around me is transformed. Good God, I think I'm starting to lose my mind. Super weird. From here I can see how the road leading out of the refugee camp splits into three paths. One leads to a kind of depression in the ground, Another leads to a graded water outlet, and the third disappears into the distance, beyond the last hill. Could that be the road leading to the city? You mean this road that very clearly goes directly to the city? Could that be the road to the city, guys? Any one of these roads will take you someplace outside the fence around the camp, and that can only be a good thing. From here, I can see one another and the... Th Do you guys think the road to the city could be the road to the city? I can't figure that part out. What part? You'd better have a good. All right, they're not gonna kill me. Sorry. It just won't let me. A pool of blood mixed with mud marks a spot where that man, the mole, was shot. It gives me the chills. They may be able to kill with impunity, but it's still the scene of a crime. Still the scene of a crime. A pool of blood gives me... Aha! What's this? There's a woman smoking in here. Ah. Uh. All right, can you hear me? I think I muted for the sneeze. Clothes, knickknacks, and broken furniture. This room is full of broken, worthless junk. There's mm -hmm. no question. This place was looted recently, and rather violently, I might add. Clothes, knickknacks, there's no question. Judging by its location, this closed door should lead into one of the bedrooms in this house. I can hear something from the other side. Sounds like howls or cries. Another sick person? Judging by its location, I can hear- Hey! You filthy rat! Get out of my house! Do you hear me? Out! I... Forgive me. We've got nothing left for you to steal. Go back to your sewer, you filthy rat! Scram! No, you've got it all wrong. I haven't come to take anything. Yes, I have. <laughs> but wait a minute. I recognize you. Weren't you with the man they shot out there a while back? Yes. My name is Misha, and that man is my husband. But what happened? Why did they shoot your husband? It's all your fault. All because of you cap rats. One of you reported him for harboring a dissolved. And those army pigs opened fire without even caring who they were aiming at. 
or how hard my husband had worked for them. So the lady the cleanup brigades took away from this house was a dissolved. That was my mother. I'm never gonna see her again. Damn filthy rats. Are you satisfied? It was you people that brought death to this family. You people? What, what the fuck did I have to do with it? Why is everything all over the floor? Were you robbed? They left us nothing. Those envious rats took everything. They'd been hanging around waiting for days. It seems like those bums have a sixth sense about where it dissolved as being hidden. When they saw my husband injured and lying on the ground, they forced their way in and looted our house. Bums? Envious rats? Who are you talking about exactly? Them! All of them! Mm, Everyone living here in this camp envies us. They envy who we are, what we have, our privileges, our army contacts. So they envy you because your husband is a mole. Is that right? Don't call him that, you worm! He collaborates with the forces of law and order. That's his job. And in this collaboration with law enforcement, wasn't turning in others of the dissolved one of your husband's duties? Shut up! Shut up! You envy us too! You're just like the rest of the rats in this camp. And what are the three of us going to do when my husband's gone? We'll lose everything. The house, the money, our privileges. But he just got shot. Also, am I a worm or a rat? I'm confused. You said the three of us. Is there someone else in the family? We have two children, two small boys. And in this camp, envy eats away at everybody. Now we'll be outcasts. No one will help us when my husband is gone. Winter will come, our money will run out, and my children will starve. Windows Those two brats coming. wear me down with their antics. That's I have to false. chase after them all the time, but they're my children, and none of this is their fault. They're like always scampering around, getting into capers. I mean, she's such a lovely person. I feel so bad for her. How is your husband? He's badly injured. One of the bullets went through his stomach. He's not gonna make it. He's really suffering. He's in excruciating pain. If we at least had some morphine to ease his pain. Quest received. Scampering brats on a caper. What privileges are you going to lose? As a collaborator, my husband always received special treatment from the army. More generous rations of food and water. A little money, clothes, a treat now and then for the kids. And now all of that's gonna end. We won't be able to leave the camp. When he dies, they'll take away his gate pass. We'll die locked gate up in pass. here. Like you rats. Hmm. Did she say a gate pass? Listen, Misha. I can help you. And just how are you gonna help us, rat? There's something important I urgently need to get from the other side of the fence. While I'm out there, I could also get some morphine for your husband. I've heard that things are better in the city. It shouldn't be too hard for me to find some, but first I need to get out of the camp. Like I told you, my husband has a pass that gets him through the gate. I could lend it to you, but I don't trust you. I don't trust you or any other filthy rat in this camp. Beat it! Get out of here! If I want to get my identity back, I need that drug for the dissolved. And to get it, I have to leave the camp. I have to do whatever it takes to gain this woman's trust. No matter how unpleasant I find her screams and insults. Listen to me. I'm not just another camp rat. I'm your friend. I want to be your friend. It is you I, told me King you were worried your about friends. winter coming. Let me help you. I'll bring you food. Food for your children. Then will you trust me? I don't know. Bring me the food first. First you bring me food for my children. And then we'll talk about that pass. I'll do it. <laughs> Updated my journal. First, I have to get out of the camp, and Misha will lend me her husband's pass in exchange for getting her some food. Let's write down some more illegal shit, also continuing to uh, incriminate other people as well as myself, basically getting everyone killed. It's Misha, the mole's wife. The man the cleanup brigade shot out there. A rather unpleasant woman, but she could be the key to getting out of the camp. First, I have to get some food for her children. That was the deal. It's Misha, a rather first. Yeah, unintentionally turning into a mole. Hello again. They shot him! Those pigs shot my husband! I know. 
And what are the three of us gonna do when my husband's gone? We'll lose everything. The house, the money, our privileges. There's some nice cardboard uh, shacks right over there I've seen. You said the three. We have two, and in this camp, winter will those two brats wear me, but they're my children. Hmm. I should be going, but I promise to help you, and I will. Give me that pass for getting out of the camp. I don't. For okay. Doesn't trust. If I get close me. enough, I can hear the mole through the door. He seems to be writhing in pain from the gunshot wounds in his abdomen. He must be in terrible pain. If I get close, he better not. Knowing what's inside that room, I have no interest in going in. I mean, I could at least give him some fucking whiskey, but, you know, whatevs. She wants me to get her some food, but she didn't say anything about alcoholic beverages. Fine. Post-looting mess. You know, while you're standing around, you could at least clean up. I'm just saying. I'm literally just saying. Someone knocked over that enormous bookcase with all its books. And considering what it must have weighed, several people must have been involved in all this. Yeah, multiple people must have weighed in on that decision. Let's see. Bestsellers, romantic novels, and cheap encyclopedias. I'm not surprised that the contents of this bookcase are still here. Someone knocked over that enormous... And considering... Nothing of interest. The floor of the room is littered with useless junk like this. But wait a minute. I think I can see something sticking out from under that piece of wood. It's one of the drawers from the looted dresser. It's overturned, and it looks like there's something sticking out. A pack of cigarettes. A pack of filter cigarettes trapped under the drawer. I guess whoever looted this house didn't see them. Or perhaps wasn't a smoker. A pack of filter... Or... Don't even think about touching anything in this house, rat! Haven't you done me and my family enough harm already? You're just a lousy thief, like all the other cockroaches around here. Get out of here! But I was just gonna hand uh, No, these two. wait, you're confused. I just wanted to clean up this mess a little. Not I just want to help you, okay? Oh, yeah? Keep your hands off our things, you filthy rat. Understand? Of course. Understood. Whew. <laughs> Nailed it. Some of the drawers have been torn out of this old dresser. Now they're torn apart and spread out all over the room. Some of the drawers... Now they're... Clothes. Na There's no question. Nailed it. Oh, here's the boys and a sentry tower. And the crack in the... Oh no. It's starting again. It's amazing. Everything's changing. Everything. Everything is mutating, and I haven't even moved. I don't understand. I don't understand anything. Well, it seems like that's like further in the future. Right? That must be that strange phenomenon in the sky I've heard people talking about in the camp. The one that appeared just after the great wave. God is urging his angels to punish us through the wound. It says in the notebook I found in Rod's trailer. And it does give the impression that someone slashed the sky like a delicate piece of fabric. Seeing it gives me an incredible sense of vertigo. What could have caused a phenomenon like that? This is what happens when you use everything in your inventory on everything. You Somebody was like, oh, I can look at the sky, huh? They opened up their inventory and they pulled out a knife or something. Like, well, let's see if I use this on this. What happens? Ah, fuck! That must be that God. And it does seem. Sky whiskey. Mm. Heaven is a bit far. And I'm afraid in this filthy hellhole, it's even farther than usual. Hmm. And I'm Mole's children, pile of rocks, view of the refugee camp. The view from here is incredible. Until you get a look from this side, it's impossible to get an idea of the true size of the refugee camp. 
Yeah, it's a beautiful view. It's crazy. Hundreds of miserable dwellings down there in a chaotic patchwork. Where's the limit? How long would these people put up with being confined in this hellhole? Pretty sure the limit is that perimeter fence. The view from here. Until it's an old wooden pallet those kids painted a target on. The word pigs is scrawled in the center. Seems legit. It's an old wooden... The word... Sentry tower. One of the many sentry towers surrounding the camp. And inside each and every one of them, there's a sniper, armed to the teeth, and itching to shoot something. These are by far the tallest structures in the refugee camp. Hmm. How far could it be to the highest point of that tower from here? 20? 30 yards? One of the many... There's a... Hmm. A pile of stones and pebbles. That's the kids' entire arsenal. It looks like they do just fine with them. A pile of stones. These kids must be the children of the mole and his wife. Isn't it awfully late for two kids this young to be out here by themselves? The older one can't be more than 10 or 11. No. What the fuck are you talking about? There's still daylight. Why wouldn't kids be outside playing? These kids must be the children of the mole and his wife. Isn't it awfully late for two kids this- Hi, kids. Hello, sir. What are you up to? We're doing target practice. We're going to be real good shots. Someday, we'll get those pigs who shot Dad. How awful. These children must have seen the cleanup brigades shoot their father out there. Poor kids. And how is the target practice going? Bad at the moment. We need a real target, or we'll never be able to hit those soldiers. Yeah, we need a better target. Hey, quit talking to that rat. Doesn't make any He's sense. not one of us. You know what mom and dad say about the people in the camp. Leave my brother alone. Get lost, rat. Yeah, you're not one of us. Get lost, rat. They take after their mom. Why the fuck do you need a better target? It doesn't matter what your target is. If you get good at throwing something and hitting a specific fucking spot, it doesn't. <laughs> there's no magic target that makes that better. The only thing that make it better is if you move the fucking thing further away. Magic target. Start throwing at this guy. Hi, kids. How's the target practice going? Bad at the moment. We need yeah. You know what? A pile of stone. It looks like the fuck this coon okay. I'm not gonna pick them up. I'm sure it took the kids a long time to collect all those rocks for their target practice. Besides, I bet my aim is worse than theirs. Kuno would fucking eat these boys for fucking breakfast. What do you call it when you, you're in London and you throw up after eating your first meal in the morning? English regurgitation breakfast? I was gonna go with Brexit. Because your breakfast exits. Yep. This is the barrier that the soldiers keep. It. This is the. What if I give the. What if I just bribe these guys with booze? Better not to see them drunk. Their violence could escalate to hazardous levels. What if I just show them the journal of fucking incrimination? Hey guys. It doesn't seem like a good idea. Yeah, no shit. It's difficult to make out anything from here, but it seems like a dry riverbed crosses the dirt road leading into the camp. It's difficult to make out anything.
a small military sentry box with no door, so narrow that the soldier on duty can hardly turn around inside. A small mo so motorcycle. Clean and well maintained. This bike is without a doubt the best looking object in the entire refugee camp. Although, that's not saying much considering the disastrous condition of everything around me. Hmm. From the color of the seat and body, I'd say it's army property. And also by the way the soldiers at the gate are guarding it. They never take their beady eyes off it. This guy's a real fucking Sherlock Holmes, the things he figures out. Clean and well- Although- Hey, Rat. I don't think that motorcycle belongs to you. Or at least I don't remember seeing your name on it anywhere. Am I mistaken? Are you one of those people who have no respect for private property, bastard? Do you know what we do in this camp with people like you? I'm beginning to get an idea. I was just curious about this thing. I'm stepping away. I was just curious. Hey, rat! Are you- I'm beginning- I'm step- Maybe this leather saddlebag contains tools for motorcycle maintenance. Like a- or a- Whew. Well, I'm sure I could drive it. I have no idea how these machines work. He couldn't even think of the name of one tool, like a wrench or, you know. Ratchet or something. Maybe this leather saddle bore a Whew. Hey, rat. I don't. I'm beginning. I'm staying. Man, everybody's really pissed about me trying to take their stuff. People are real bajiggity in this game. Compared to some good old classic walk around and take everybody's shit and they don't care kind of games. Hence. I sure hope those boys don't hide in here. That would be too intense. <laughs> what, what, how come there's so many weird people around? These people are literally just here to yell at me for trying to take things. Scrap metal and trash. A thick wall of scrap metal, debris and rusty metal surrounds this place on all four sides. It's a good 20 feet high. I can't believe it manages to stay up. A thick wall, it's a... The wreck of an old ice cream truck. I don't reckon it's going anywhere without its wheels. It looks like the enormous skeleton of a beached whale. It doesn't look anything like that. What's up, Splode? How you doing? How is it so far? Uh, hmm. The wreck of an old ice cream truck. I don't know. I, I don't know how it is so far. Cars, machinery, steel, cement. Even the skeleton of an old construction crane. This place is a veritable cemetery of the industrial age. Cars, this... It's honestly kind of like Big K Diet Cola. That's how it is. This noisy electric generator seems very old and decrepit, but it works. This noise, but it... Hey! Keep your hands away from that thing, pal, if you want him to stay attached to you. Okay. I just wanted to see it up close. There's no reason to get nervous. Everybody gets super bajiggity. An enormous rusty tank designed to collect rainwater. Everything indicates that the great wave wiped out the concept of running water in one fell swoop. At least on this side of the fence. Blah. It's completely coated with rust and mildew. This structure seems more like a gigantic penicillin culture than a water tank. An enormous rust. Everything at least. How could you wipe out the concept of running water from a tank? It's not like it requires. If it's in a tank and it's just and it, it come, it, it's just it's just phys it doesn't require like electricity. It just it's just physics. You, you can't like. Yep, gravity no longer applies to water. That's for damn sure. 
great wave. These guys have improvised a card table for their poker game by putting a plank on top of two old tires. There's no doubt that necessity has sharpened the resourcefulness of the people who live in the camp. They're playing fucking caravan. These guys have imp there's no Obviously, I'm not going to be able to take their coins. A few lousy coins. They don't look like they're worth much. Just a few loose pennies. Just some small change to make the game a bit more interesting. A handful of dirty coins. Corroded and as thin as the head of a screwdriver. Oh, that was a hint. You need to use these coins to unscrew something. A few lousy... Two guys entertaining themselves by playing poker. I suppose poker. time passes very slowly in here. Even though there are only a few coins on the table, the game seems very intense. I'm afraid neither of them likes losing a hand. No, there may be some intense games going on elsewhere in this place, but this one actually specifically isn't intense. Two guys entertaining them, even I'm afraid. She's a very young woman. Practically a girl. She's playing by herself with some junk she found among the scrap metal and trash. She's a very... Playing with junk. Alright. Let's try to talk to these guys. Good hand? Not bad. But you know what they say. The important thing is not the hand. It's knowing how to play your cards right. If you've come to be with the girl, where's the money? If you haven't, quit oh, bothering shit, us. Oh shit, it's like that. Hello, Mr. Sleepyhead. Excuse me? What did you call me? You're Mr. Sleepyhead. I saw you sleeping in Colin's trailer. I'm so glad you're awake now. So they're pimping out their daughter or somebody. I don't know what's happening here. It is scandalous. Mr. Sleepyhead? No, that's not my name. I'm Michael. No, you're just trying to fool me. You're Mr. Sleepyhead. My name is Rose. There's something odd about this girl's behavior. Yeah. It's true that she's very young, but she talks like a little girl. Nice to meet you, Rose. Are they pimping out some, like, mentally handicapped girl? The fuck is happening here? I wasn't asleep. Uh, I was sick for a long time in that trailer. Not that kind of no, sick, though. No, you weren't sick. You were sleeping. Like a big brown bear, Sir Sleepyhead. Sometimes I used to watch you sleeping in Rod's house, and you would grunt in your sleep like a bear. A great big lazy bear, Mr. Sleepyhead. But I'm glad you're awake now. I like your voice. You sound like a knight in a fairy tale. I'm getting some real bad vibes here. I'm not comfortable with this situation. So, do you know Rod and Colin too? Of course. I go over to their house a lot. Well, when they let me out of the van, that let is. Rod and his van. wife have been very nice to me. Sometimes they let me play with Colin. We're very good friends. Are you a friend of Rod's and Colin's too, Mr. Sleepyhead? Yes, I'm friends with them too. Do you want me to tell you a secret, Mr. Sleepyhead? No, please don't. Of course. I have your old clothes. The ones you were wearing when Rod and his wife found you. I have them in the van. Oh, they were going to throw them away, but they gave them to me to wrap my baby in. Baby? It'll be cold now that winter's coming. Your baby? You have a baby, Rose? Yes, I have a baby. But he's not with me right now. He got lost. Have you good. seen him? Do you know where he is? I have another secret to tell you, Mr. Sleepyhead. Back in the van, Rose. Now. Move your ass. Get in there. Another secret? Just a minute. Wait. Get in that van, Rose. It's a very important secret, Mr. Sleepyhead. Something about you. Something about before the great wave. But first I have to find my baby. Have you seen him? Come on, Rose, you heard me. You don't want to get us mad now, do you? I have to go. Goodbye, Mr. Sleepyhead. The Poor girl. Off. She's obviously mentally ill. She's just a little girl in a grown-up's body. Yeah. And you, 
If you want to go in there with her, you got to pay like everybody else. Oh, hell no. Alright, a couple things. For one, she probably doesn't really have a baby. It's probably like a doll or some other object that she just, you know, psychotically believes is a baby. Two, there's two fucking bullets in that gun in the in the Danish cookie tin. Those two bullets are for these motherfuckers. The wreck of an old ice cream. It looks like... Those are the guys guarding Rose. They won't let me speak to her if I don't pay the corresponding fee. I believe it was called pimping before the great wave. Just laying it all out very straightforward in case you didn't hadn't picked up on the subtle subtext. Those are the guys go I believe Those are the guy I believe these guys have improvised a car there's no just some a hand What exactly do you think you're doing? Just try putting those grubby little fingers on those coins, and we'll chop them off and use them for poker chips. Hey, will you quit bothering us already? Mm. Fingers wouldn't make good poker chips. They wouldn't really stack well. I'm just saying, as far as poker chips go, fingers not the best. Hey, where do you think you're going, pal? Let me into the van. I just want to talk to Rose for a few minutes. Of course, it's none of our business what you want to do with her. But if you go into the van, you gotta pay the price. Listen. You got any money on you? No, I don't have any on me. Then come back when you do and quit bothering us. We have a very busy schedule, you know? The girl said something about a secret involving me. Something from before the great wave. It seemed important, but what is it? Maybe it was a product of her madness, but I need to talk to her inside that van to get some answers. I'll come back with the money. Now that sounds much better. I see that we're starting to speak the same language. I'll come back with a fucking weapon. Yeah, uh, those two poker players are dissolved AF. So dissolved. Better not. If these guys are unpleasant sober, I had to imagine them drunk. I don't quite see how... To be frank... I'm afraid that the fuel that powers this generator isn't made from barley. Use this here? How? Use your imagination, Michael. So dissolved. Just out of curiosity, ah, oh, these guards are probably fucking customers. They seem like scumbags, too. I don't mean to bother you, but could I ask you a few questions? Hey, it seems like we have a nosy rat in the camp. But why are you calling me Rat? Who's in charge here? Well, 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 did you hear that? It looks like we have a new kid on the block. Let me ask you something. If you people living in this camp crawl around in garbage, build your houses out of garbage, and eat garbage, what else are we going to call you? We're in charge here, the ones with the rifles. And that's the only rule you need to know. See all those dark stains on the wall next to the barbed wire? Yes. I see them. They're the guts and brains of rats like you who forgot the golden rule. We call it the wall of shame. We're in charge here. That's pretty easy to grasp, isn't it? But sometimes one of you forgets. And that gives us some more motivation to make you better students. So, how's your memory? My memory? <laughs> That's funny. In another context, that would be an amusing question. But there's nothing amusing about these animals. My memory works well enough to remember who is in charge here. Don't worry. You catch on fast, right? That's a good thing. Now get out of here. I'm really regretting the fact that this is a January game and not the kind of game where I can kill all these motherfuckers. You say that I can only get out of the camp with a pass. Where can I get one? Only soldiers and moles have passes for entering and leaving the camp. And you don't look like either one of those things. So get lost. Well, sometimes we can make an exception. But only if the person who wants to leave is generous enough. And why exactly do you want to leave the refugee camp? What did you lose on the other side of the fence, rat? 
Why would I want to be here? So, I've heard things are better in the city. Is that true? Yeah, it could be. But that's none of your business. What do you care? If you're going to die in this dump anyway. Get the idea of leaving right out of your head. There's no place for rats like you on the other side of the fence. Unless you want to take a walk in Suicide Park. Do you want to become a dark star, rat? Now quit bothering us sure. and get lost. What's the point of them even keeping these people in here? If they're if they're giving them rations of food and water, they're literally just using manpower and and supplies just to keep these people here and alive, but they don't seem to be benefiting from them in any way. Why not just kill all these people or just abandon them? Yeah, I'm not going to say this. Let's talk about something else. Nice motorcycle. It is, isn't it? It's ours. So get anywhere near it, and you'll end up against that wall. You don't have the authority to touch it, or point at it, or even look at it. Dare to touch it with your grubby hands, and you're a dead man. I guarantee it. Got it? Okay, understood. I won't bother you anymore. Get lost. Fuck these motherfuckers. Hmm. The Wall of Shame. Hmm. The Wall of Shame. The soldiers at the gate called it. This wall looks like it's witnessed a good number of executions, to say nothing of murders. The gray of the cement, combined with the red blood stains, form a truly macabre collage. It's fascinating and terrifying. Hashtag Macom Collage. Hmm. This to say no. A small so na maybe this leather saddle or a whew. Hmm. And also by the way. So dissolved AF. There'd be some soldiers that wouldn't mind talking to relieve the boredom. But not to one of us filthy rats. There's the horizon. If only I had a knife or something, I could cut another thing in the sky. Smoke and I wonder what... I need to do ice time, y'all. Yeah, and that person looks really happy to be alive. I need to do ice time, y'all. You know how ice time goes. All right. I'll be right back in just a second because it is time for ice time. That's right, it's ice time. It's ice time. It's ice time. It's ice time. Ice time. Ice time. It is time for ice. It's ice time. Ice time. Ignore oh, that. That was nothing. It is time for ice. They should really consider nuking this planet. This is terrible. Yeah. It is hella terrible. Hella terrible. Alright, let's do some porridge. Um, drums, drums, electrical cable, light fixture, brick building. I can go inside, more drums. And a solitary inhabitant. Another camp inhabitant. He seems quite elderly. What's he doing here all by himself? And this camp is a super shithole. Another camp inhabit. Hello. Hello, son. Would you like to get a little closer to the fire? Cannibal. Thanks, mister. This is a rather isolated part of the camp. What are you doing here? Well, I'm waiting. That's all. Just waiting. Mm-hmm. 
You're waiting. And what is it you're waiting for exactly? Nothing in particular. The usual. For the fire to go out. For sunrise. For it to get cold again. I'm waiting for something to change. Or for everything to stay as it is. I'm just waiting. You're too young to understand. War. War never changes. You know, I want to do a post-apocalyptic setting where everybody's super happy for some reason. <laughs> Fucking like post-apocalyptic whimsy, Dale. Like, man, we were sick of society. We're so glad it's over now. Life is good. Jaunty gumption bomb. Oh, jaunty gumption. It's starting to get cold. Where's your tent? Or your trailer? Yes, I had a tent once. They issued me one when I decided to enter the refugee camp after the Great Wave. A trailer was out of the question. They went to the families with the best contacts. Ah, you know how it is. Even in purgatory, some people are more equal than others. Yeah, no, no dry bones. And where's your tent now? Uh, it was stolen from me a while back. They fetch a good price on the black market now. Stolen? But how could anyone... <laughs> you seem to be new in the camp, am I right? These things happen nowadays. It's best to take things as they come. The reality of the new world is very simple, son. The soldiers and the moles do whatever they like on this side of the fence. And the hunter and his men run the black market and all the dirty rackets. I suggest you memorize all this. The hunter? I've exchanged a few words with him, but I hardly know him. He seemed kind yes. of nice. The man who protected me during all the shooting. He seems like someone with good connections and some answers. Could he know anything about the drug for treating the dissolved? Do you know where I can find him? You can find him in those barracks at the back. That's his... Well, it says his logistics office. Now, the hunter is very dangerous. Watch your step around him and his men. I happened to meet his father when he was young. Ah, oh, he was a violent, degenerate son of a bitch. A real asshole. Mm, okay. And I'm afraid his son has followed in his footsteps. You say that you decided to enter the camp. Does that mean that people weren't forced to come here? No, oh, no. Of course not. Why would they have to force us? The catastrophe hit the city hard. Those of us who had lost our homes were invited to come here. Invited. In principle, it was temporary. Just until the authorities got the situation under control and started rebuilding. <clears throat> we used to have food, water, and a place to sleep. But now it's more like a prison camp than a refugee center. What happened? I don't really know. I guess something went wrong. Yeah. The new house and the promises never got built. And in the end, the army seized control of the camp. And the food ran out. And then the water supply. Nobody bothered to replace them. Seems like our lives didn't matter anymore. I see. In time, things in here started to get very ugly. There were riots, uprisings, and the army decided to close the gates of the camp without any notice. One day they decided that no one could enter or leave here. Well, actually, people still could. Um, enter, that is. Now, this is where anyone who gets in the way in the city ends up. Or anyone they don't know what to do with. So, this has turned into something like a concentration camp. That's right, son. That's exactly what it is. But... You know, it's funny. I remember when my father told us about the war in Europe. About all the persecution, deportations, and those overcrowded cattle cars... That all sounded to us like an old movie, an old horror movie. And look at us now. I guess some things never change. They just stop being visible for long enough for us to forget about them. War. War never changes. But what's the point of even keeping them alive? 
in a camp. If they just... Why wouldn't they just kill everybody? I mean, it doesn't seem like they're forcing people to work or anything. Which is the only reason you'd want to keep them, right? Unless they're soylent greening people. So far there hasn't been any evidence of that. Cattle cars. Yeah, I have the image of just like this great big Buick going down the road with a fucking cow behind the wheel. And when they honk the horn, it's like a terrifying moo. Moo! Oh man, I'd love to have a moo horn in my car. It'd be amazing. Let's talk about something else. So tell me, is there any way to get out of the camp? Oh, I'm sorry, son. The only way to get out of this camp is to know someone important who can pull strings for you. Or to become a camp mole. Those traitorous scumbags have gate passes. Hmm. I see. I'm not surprised you want to get out of this shithole. You've no doubt got something to do or someone to find out there. Well, they say things are better in the city. Probably that not, there's though. there's order and that things are starting to function again. But who knows? Well, at least they have Reverend Blake and the consolation of Suicide Park. Suicide Park. Reverend Blake is that fucking bitter quit motherfucker. I'll bet things aren't good in the city, right? Everyone's going to be like, oh, the city, it's all good in the city. When I get to the city, it's going to be like worse somehow. New horn. And what was the extent of the Great Wave's impact? How are things beyond the city? Truth is, I couldn't tell you. In the first days, the chaos was so overwhelming that no one worried about anything beyond their own backyard. We victims were disoriented, cut off from the world. Then I came into the camp, and well, news from far off places doesn't reach this prison. I'm afraid you'd have to leave here to get the answer to that question. Suicide Park? What's that? Nah, just a song that drifts into the refugee camp from the other side of the fence now and then. And the first dark stars come out to hang from the sky. We could sit and count them together, you and I, when the sun departs from Suicide Park. I'm sure you still have some hopes, some dreams. I'm afraid you're just too young to understand it. This game's kind of dark, you guys. Um... Who's Reverend Blake? He's a preacher who sometimes comes from the city to bring us a little comfort. Now, some people make jokes about him, but many of us believe that he's a prophet. You should hear him speak sometime. His words etch themselves deeply into your soul. Jubilation. That's why he has so many followers inside and outside the camp. Oh, I'm ready to get some shit etched on my soul. Doesn't bring any news about the outside. Apparently, the only news he brings is the good news. I should be going on my way. Have a pleasant wait, mister. When the sun departs from Suicide Park. Damn it. I can't get that song that man was talking about out of my head. That's the poor old guy who told me he was waiting. For whatever a man that old and vulnerable could be waiting for. Death. When the sun... De death. It's death, you guys. That's what he's waiting for. I thought you should know. Dented, dirty, and in pretty bad shape. In this corner of the camp, there are drums stored everywhere you look. Dented, dirty... Someone placed a bunch of those rusty drums up against the wall. Ugh. They smell like liquor and industrial oil. Oh, Jesus. The cocktail of odors is nauseating. Someone placed... Ugh. It oh. smelled worse. Okay. Here goes. Platoon diving. It's impossible oh. to budge these drums at all. I don't know what they contain, but whatever it is, it weighs a ton. Not a literal ton. Someone placed a... Ugh. Oh. Okay. It's impossible. 
It's oh. a thick cable that runs along that building's roof, but I can't see it very well from here. It's too high. I climbed up on the thing. It's a thick, but I can't. Another brick and mortar building. That's the second one I've seen inside the camp. These structures stand out like mansions in the misery that dominates this place. Its owner must be someone important. Another brick and mortar building. These. Light fixture. I give this guy some booze. Better not. If I give this bottle away, somebody will just drink it. And what's worse, I wouldn't have it anymore. <laughs> wow. Okay. Got a sounds real altruist here. I would give that to somebody, but then I wouldn't have it. So, you know. Dozens of stored drums stack chaotically. What the devil could be in them? And who might want to keep them here? On the outside, I see only the logos of brands of heavy machinery oil. Though, judging from the lids, these drums have been reused and filled with something else. Of course, I guess I shouldn't give it away because handouts are for cowards. As we've come to learn. This bright light leaves no doubt about where the entrance to the building is. There are some insects fluttering around it that end up getting scorched by the heat and dropping dead. Dumb insects. This bright light there that end up... I guess we're going in here. Oh shit, look at all these people. The hunter's here. The hunter's homies. I don't see Reverend Blake. I thought he could, might be in here as well, but... It's a bunch of open beer cans, dented and empty. I'm not sure why, but I find the smell of stale alcohol they give off distasteful, like all the other odors in this place. Oh, distasteful. It's a bunch of... I'm not... He's behind the bar, and he serves the drinks. Now, I don't claim to be clairvoyant, but I'd swear this guy is the owner of the place. Except I think we kind of are clairvoyant. He's behind the bar. Most of these bottles have been opened, and they look like they've been reused hundreds of times. They're filled with a grayish liquid with a rather unappetizing appearance. Among the old... I imagine the fact... Most of these... They're f Among the old bottles, the bartender is saving a few that still have their seals intact. I imagine the fact that they still retain their original contents makes them luxury items. Yeah. Oh, that's the background music for the establishment. The speaker is cranking out a dreary, droning country song, and it's getting on my nerves. Oh, the speaker... Stain from spilled drinks, rings from glasses and rust. The bartender looks out from the other side, seemingly bored and apathetic. What a pointless waste of time. The rag he's using to wipe it down is even dirtier than the surface of the bar itself. Mm -hmm. The cheerful patrons of the bar. They look cheerful. I suppose the gray substance one of them is sipping is liquor, but I can't tell what kind. I don't think he can either. The cheerful patron, but I can't, I don't think. Probably some kind of extremely dodgy homemade hooch. This old metal stool serves as a table. The truth is that its unfortunate appearance doesn't exactly invite you to sit on it. This old metal the truth unfortunate appearance. Someone went to all the trouble of taking the hood off an old Corvette and dragging it in here just to turn it into a tacky bar table. Actually, that sounds kind of cool. Imagine if you went into a bar or a restaurant and all the tables were fucking severed off hoods of cars. That would actually be kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. Someone went to all the trouble of taking the hood off an old Corvette just to... Hey, that's the guy I was talking to during the shooting by the cleanup brigades. What did he say his name was? The Hunter? Hey, what did the Hunter? Yes, he's the Hunter. Apparently I can take the empty beer cans, or attempt to. Everybody's going to be like, Why are you taking on your beer cans? That's how they'll sound. Watch. Oh, sure. The one time people don't give a fuck. A bunch of empty aluminum cans. Lightweight and tinny. A bunch... They're used and empty. Why would I want to refill these cans? 
I don't know. I'm afraid that using the cans with this won't get me anywhere. A bunch of All right. Well, let's talk to the bartender, I guess. That speaker droning its country tunes, it could start a hoochinanny up in the bar. Wow. What are you having, pal? Nope. I'm afraid I don't have any cash on me. That's no problem here. We don't only accept cash, we also barter. We accept anything of value. <laughs> that excludes checks, naturally. No checks. Interesting place. Are you the owner? No, pal. Don't get the wrong idea. I only work here. This belongs to the hunter, like every other business enterprise here inside the camp. Got He's it. the head honcho. He's the I shop see. collar. Definitely got to be friends with him. Checks mix. trying to think of some dumb joke about getting a bunch of people from different walks of life and, and you know different heights and weights and hair color and everything all people from you know the Czech Republic so then I'd have a Czechs mix of people but I couldn't really think of a way to make that joke without it sounding super dumb so instead I just told you hypothetically about the joke without having actually made it I saw a bunch of barrels stacked up at the entrance of the building. Just out of curiosity, what's in them? Nothing. Just some things that need to be stored. Okay, Take my that's advice, not pal. nothing. Keep your nose out of the hunter's business if you want to keep it on your face. Okay, it was just curiosity. What do you sell here? Anything you can eat or drink. Anything that fits into a box or a bottle. For other types of goods, talk to the hunter directly. What do you need? Liquor, tobacco, food? I could use some food. You're in luck. We have some of these emergency food rations the authorities distributed among the inhabitants of the camp in the first weeks after the Great Wave. You know, a bunch of them just uh, happened to fall into our hands. What do you have to offer in exchange? Credit. Could you give it to me on credit until I get something to trade for it? Sorry. This isn't a charity, pal. Hold on. Let's not start giving away the liquor just I don't yet. think I have anything that could interest you. I'm not really interested in buying anything. Hello again? I'm not really... Okay, let's talk to these charming gentlemen. The cheerful patron. But I can't... I don't think... Well, I can't even talk to these guys. Alright, let's talk to the hunter. He seems like a nice dude. Mike, my friend, it's nice to see you again. Uh, hi. Guys, this is my friend Mike. He's new around here. We met at one of the cleanup brigade's latest parties. Isn't that right, dude? Pull up a seat and have a drink. We like to be hospitable to newcomers. Something tells me I shouldn't accept that drink. That it's not a good idea. Shut the fuck not up. Not anymore. We're accepting. Oh, no thanks. I don't drink. Okay, Mike. Whatever you say. But I'm not accustomed to people turning down. Why crowd. would you in At offend least, him? Not in my own establishment, in front of my men. So tell God me, damn it, what brings you here? This guy doesn't understand how to play the game. Tell me, why do they call you the Hunter? That's a good question, Mike. You know, my real name is Hank. But no one calls me that anymore. Okay. Now I'm the hunter. Because I can find you what you want, when you want it. You know, it doesn't matter where it is, how fast it runs, or where it tries to hide. The new world gave me a new name and a new life. A new life? Yeah, a new life. It's hard to explain, dude. But I think in a way, you and I are similar, Mike. That's why I like you. Let me explain it to you. It was the Great Wave. 
the great wave that changed and purified everything. The old world was a messy, complicated, and unjust place. After the great wave, everything became crystal clear. When all the old laws disappeared, only one rule remained. You gotta do what you gotta do. It's that simple. And that's the universal law that puts each of us in our rightful place. Do you follow me? Hmm. You gotta do what you gotta do. We found Sounds somebody like who's happy about the apocalypse. Anything and everything. Even the indefensible. Yes, Hank. I follow you perfectly. I knew it. I knew you'd get it straight off, Mike. But don't call me Hank. I told you. That guy died in the great wave. I like this guy. I like this guy. This is this is what I would be like in the apocalypse. I don't know if I should tell him this, though. He probably already knows everything, though. I should be going now. Fine, Mike. You're welcome anytime. Remember, dude, here we can get you whatever you need. No questions asked. No questions asked, huh? That's Hank the Hunter. It seems that he's the one who controls the black market inside the camp. Or at least, that's what I've been told. His business stinks to high heaven to me. But I'm going to need him. I'm sure of that. That's Hank. His bi They look at their boss like obedient dogs. I guess these two gorillas, like everything in this establishment, either belong to, work for, or owe some debt of loyalty to the hunter. They look at their boss like... While this man seems to be the owner of the place, he's actually just another one of the hunter's lackeys. While this man... Hmm. Hello again. What can I get for you? I could use some- You're in luck. Among the- You know, what do you- Hmm. Would a bottle of liquor do? Let me see. It's a good brand of whiskey, but the bottle's been opened, and there's a lot missing. I'd take it, but I'd need something more. God damn it. I'm afraid I have nothing more that can interest you. Too bad, pal. Come back with something more, and the food's yours. You know how it works. We accept everything. Cash, jewelry, liquor, tobacco. Hmm. Well, there were some cigarettes on the floor of that one lady's room. Maybe I can go back and tell her I need to take these to trade for food. Think I can deal with these cans? They're used and dented. I don't think I'd gain it. They're used and I'm afraid I the cables. I'm not gonna give it to anyone. That's the poor old for Hello, mister. I still am. That's all I can do at this point, don't you agree? I should be going. This is an odd game. Time is left. There's no way I'm... Beer cans. They're used in dent... Liquor the door to open it up? I'm afraid that the liquor won't help at all to unjam this door. Fine. I don't think it's a good idea to... This guy already has enough junk in his shopping cart. He doesn't need these cans. It doesn't look like it's... Nothing but leaky... Good. Not sure if there's anything else to meaningfully do. There is the protruding bed spring again. They're used and dented. I don't quite see. They're used and dented. Even though the metal is very thin, and the protruding spring would go through it easily, there's no point in slicing open these cans. Mm -hmm. The oil lamp is better enough. Use this. They're used and dented.
It's bolted from inside. I'm not going to sniff up. Mm. This oven is, there's nothing left. Ram the door. Can I ask you a few? I'll answer. He doesn't well, have any new just any things to talk about. I want a box that used to hold Danish butter cookies. God forgive us, but there's. I want the gun out of that box. No, there's nothing I could do with those shacks besides just look at them. Now I understand where this besides that I don't think I'd gain they're used It's Colin, but dissolved. It's shocking to see one up close. I'm ashamed to admit that I'm afraid of catching it, but I'm glad there's a pane of glass between us right now. It's Colin I'm I probably already have Colin's it. mother slipping away. It's good old rod. The person who's been- t He promised to restore my identity if I do. Hmm. A bunch of shack. I can't- Nothing but good. You go try to get the- I could go try to get the, uh, cigarettes from her. I don't mean to bother you. Hey. I won't bother. Get. Don't know what to do about this situation. Generator. They're used and dented. I'm afraid I. Why would I give the cans? I don't have this, but that's still no reason. They're used and. It doesn't look like. Generator. Those are the guys guarding Rose. I believe it was called. Hey, you guys. Hello again, pal. Have you come back to spend some time with Rose, or do you just enjoy wasting our time? That poor girl's not right in the head. She acts like a little girl. How can you people be so unscrupulous? Rose is an adult. She's earning a living. Like we're all trying to in this camp. Mind your own business, pal. You're abusing a poor, disturbed girl. Us? Taking advantage of Rose? Us? You want to insult us? We're giving her room and board. She's got nothing to complain about. But she's got to work. That's the only thing we ask of her in return. That's the way things work now. Bring us the money, then you can get in the van with her. Hey! Do us a favor and spare us all that sanctimonious crap from the old world, pal. Don't waste our time. What the fuck work are these guys doing? Let me into the- Of course, it's none of our bit. Got any- No. Then come back- We have a- The girl said something It seemed- Maybe- I'll come back- Now that's- Is that an electric generator? I've seen very few of these around here. Yeah, in this hellhole, you can count them on the fingers of one hand. Nowadays, you can't buy generators like this anywhere. And with the power grid all blown to hell, you can bet that one of these is worth more than your life. We use it to light Rose's room. We like to protect our, uh, investments. So don't get too close to it. These things are very fragile, and they have a bad habit of getting lost. Now, we wouldn't want that to happen, would we? I don't have anything more to discuss with you. I'm killing these guys. As I figure out how. To be frank, Reverend Blake. 
Seems like my only choice is to go back up to... Here. Hello again. They shot him. And what? I know. Well, the three of you. I've already talked to your two boys out there. Those two brats wear me down with their antics. I have to chase after them all the time. They're just children. What do you know, you rat? I have to run after them all the time. Those kids don't give me a minute's peace. It's exhausting. I mean, you don't have to run after them. You could just let them do what they want. I'm just saying. The three of you. Those two brats. The what do you? Those. I should Maybe be I going. Maybe I can give the. But I give me that pass for getting out of the camp. I don't. First. Okay. Maybe I can give the beer cans to the kids to use as their superior targets to throw rocks at. And then. They'll do something for me. The Mole's sons are doing target practice. They want to avenge their father. They probably saw how that... Hi, kids. How's the target practice going? Bad at the moment. We need a real... Yeah. Hey, you know what? Leave... All right, let's try to give them the beer cans. Thank you. Now we'll really be able to become the best shots in the camp. So now you're saying this rat isn't a rat? No, I'm not. My name is Michael. Hello, Michael. Michael, provider of beer cans. So tell me, why do you want to throw rocks at those soldiers? We have to get revenge. We're big boys now. And that's what we gotta do. Those pigs shot our dad. We heard him screaming. He's hurt real bad. Mom said we'll never see him again. Damn pigs! My brother and I are gonna get them. All of them! But when they were dad's friends, you used to say you wanted to be a soldier when you grew up. Shut up! That was before. I wish I could reach those watchtowers with my rocks. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? Hmm, that's not a bad idea. Something tells me that a little commotion along the barbed wire fence would be a good thing for everyone. No, you throw a rock at that guy, he's just gonna shoot you. It's a great idea. Let's get these kids killed. It's pretty late for kids like you. What are you doing out in the street at this hour? Hey, we're not kids. We have to practice our marksmanship. Our mom gets real mad when we do it inside the house. Yeah. It's not like we have anywhere else to go in this dump. Nowhere else to go? So you don't go to school? Don't you have any friends from school? There is no school. Not since the explosion. Our mom says we don't need it anyway. We're big boys now, and someday we'll be very important people in the camp. Just like our dad. That's why we don't hang out with the other kids around here. Our parents say they're rats. They'd be a bad influence on us. Yes, we're going to be brave and strong, like our dad. Right, Michael? Of course you will. Is this kid just missing the top of his head? Where the fuck is the top of his head? I wish I could get these kids to go throw rocks at the guys, uh, the, the fucking pimp guys. Then, you know, I don't know. I need your help, boys. How can we help you, Michael? I have to get something from inside your house. It's something I need so that I can help your father. Understand? But your mother is very agitated, and I need you to give me a hand with her. It's a mission. What do you want us to do, Michael? I need you to get your mother out of the house for a few minutes. Just long enough for me to go in and get what I need. Do you think you can do that? Of course, we're big boys. I'll owe you. I promise to give you a reward. Okay, let's do it. A mission. I won't give them a reward.
It's an old wooden pad. Now it's something you can stack hands on. They seem like much more fun to use for target practice. I'm not going to pick them up. Besides, a pile of stone. It looks like. Dated my journal. I think the kids deserve a reward. All right. Better not. I have no. I can get the cigarettes now. Which I could then trade to get the food. An open pack of filter cigarettes. And it's half empty. <laughs> That's funny. I can't remember whether or not I smoked before the great wave. Cigarettes and liquor. Not a bad combination. But maybe now isn't the time. Better not. Hmm. They got the reward of the cancer oh, shoot up. Uh, what the hell's going on? Oh god, my head feels like it's gonna explode. Michael, please, help us, help us. Please, remember, Beachwood Oracle. Repent, it's the sun. Was it our fault? Did we do it? Yes, we did it. Enough. Images and that woman's voice. It's the same one that woke me up in the trailer. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. And stop tormenting me. I hope Rod helps me find some answers. If not, I'll go mad. Absolutely mad. This is crazy. Oh, I can. Oh my. I can replay that if I want to. Strange vision, same female voice of what we have. What could Beechwood Oracle mean? It's a great question. I don't mean to bother you. Hey. I won't Nice to distract all these guys away so that I could you know get into those saddlebags. Maybe even steal the motorcycle. Yeah, before they hear him freaking out and take him away as one of the dissolved. Right. Oh, that's true. They didn't kill the dissolved. They took the dissolved somewhere. So maybe... Hmm. Maybe they are getting some kind of use out of the dissolved. Hello, mister. I still at. I should be going. Let's see if we can. They look at their bond like everything in this. Hello again. I could use some. You're in luck among the inhabitants. You know, what do you have to offer? I have this pack of cigarettes. Virginia tobacco. There's not much of this in the camp. That's a good start. But it's not enough. The pack's been open and several cigarettes are missing. I'd need something more. Hmm. Would a bottle of liquor do? Fantastic. I think that's a fair price. Yay! I'll take both of them. Here you go, pal. The food package is all yours. Enjoy it. In good health. The box says, Government Rescue Campaign. Sales of these foodstuffs is prohibited. I have no doubt whatsoever. The hunter and his men must have lost their scruples in the great wave. That is, if they had any to begin with. A box of non-perishable food to last a few days. It looks like it was part of the... Use the food... Okay. Hi, Mike. Huh? 
I'll ask him. Do the words Beechwood Oracle mean anything to you? Hmm. No. Sorry, dude. Sorry, Doesn't dude. Doesn't ring a bell. What is it? Some kind of riddle or play on words? I don't know. Someone told me about it, and I'm curious. That's all. I was just wondering, uh, Hank the Hunter. Are you, in fact, a cuck? Only reason I'm asking is because those two guys over there by Rose's trailer kept calling you one. I don't know. I don't know what they even mean by that. But they sure said it a lot of times. Anyway, gotta go. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> get him killed. Get him killed like that. Like that tiefling merchant or whatever he was in Saito's game. This guy, this guy is basically Van of this place. I should be going now. Fine, Mike. You're welcome anytime. Remember, dude, here we can get you whatever you need. No questions asked. I need two dead pimps. Hello again. Hmm. I'm not really. This guy looks hungry. I prefer to hold on to it. I think this will be more useful to me. <laughs> All the generosity. Alright, so if I can take the food to her. I don't know what happened to your cigarettes. What a mysterious It's mystery. Misha, a rather un- First. Hello again. They shot him! And what are the- We'll lose The three of you. Those two brats wear me down. They're just- What do you know, you Those kids don't- hmm, It's interesting that keeps not graying out. I should be- Give me that pass for- I don't- First- Okay. Alright, I got her food right here. Here. This is what I promised you. That's all the food you brought? This will barely feed us for two days! I'm sorry, it's very complicated getting more in the camp. I only wanted to show you that you can trust me, that I can help you. That's what all you rats in this trash heap say? But in the end, only thing you're interested in is taking advantage of my husband and me. I've held up my part of the bargain. Isn't that proof enough? Listen, let me have that pass to get out of the camp, and I promise I'll come back with the morphine you need to ease your husband's suffering. Ah, okay. But you better hurry. Here. What's this? A bracelet? It's like an ID badge. Wear it and the soldiers will recognize you. It won't just get you out of the camp. It'll also help you avoid all kinds of problems with the army once you reach the city. I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing by giving it to you. Just don't betray me, you rat. Bring me that morphine from my husband and I promise you, I'll give you lots of money in return. Much more money than you could earn in a lifetime in this shithole. No, that's not necessary. We never said anything about money. I have to know you're coming back. I don't trust any of you. And I know that money is the only thing that'll make you keep your word. All you camp rats are alike. Now get out of my sight and don't make me regret this. And don't come back without my husband's morphine. There'll be a fat wad of cash waiting for you. Okay. If she has all this money, why didn't she just buy some food? Two, oh, not enough food that'll only feed you for two days? What if I fucking just kill you, take the fucking ID thing, then your kids can eat longer on the food? Make it win-win for everybody. Oh yeah, I forgot. I can't kind of be also. Hashtag January. It's an ID bracelet that identifies me as an army collaborator. In other words, a mole. Wearing one of these brings certain privileges. Among others, it's my key to getting in and out of the camp. In the eyes of the now I'm useful to it's an eye wearing one in the eyes of the soldiers. This little piece of plastic makes me something more than a simple camp rat. Now I'm useful to them. Why would I want to Hmm. Well, I guess I can leave now. Reward 
work for the kids. Is it bad that I kind of want to rat out Rod and his wife and son so that the, they'll come and take them or kill them or whatever and then I can get that gun out of the box? I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. A small mill so narrow. They're the soldiers who guard the camp gate. Besides, they seem trigger happy. After getting to know them, I think that it would be better to try to avoid problems with these guys. They're the soldiers who go beside. I don't mean to bother. Hey. I won't bother. Get. Showing the bracelet to everyone in the camp. Why would I want to do that? No, I have to keep this hidden. Oh, yeah, of course. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with these drums and electrical cables and light fixtures and such. But I think the only thing I can do right now is leave the camp casually striding. Opening the car, the barrels, the generator. Yeah, there's a lot of things still to mess with in here. A saddlebag. It looks like quite a lot, but nowadays. This is the barrier the soldiers can. Alright. Go through that gate, and I'll blow your head off with one shot, rat. Hmm. Do you need to get a closer look at what I have on my wrist? Wait a minute. Look, he's got on one of those ID bracelets the camp moles wear. Those cockroaches are very useful to us in here. Lower your gun and let him leave. You heard him. Get out of here, rat. You know, forget about the logic of they just talked to me a little bit ago and I didn't have one of these. And they're not asking, hey, where did you get that? We know you haven't gone outside of here to deal with anybody. You, we know you haven't dealt with us and gotten it from us. So where the fuck did you get it? But now let's not ask any of those questions. That would make sense. The barbed wire surrounding the camp is incredibly tank. It looks like the army wanted to make it very... Apparently I can go in here, or in here, or toward the city. Any one of these roads will take you something that. I want to come check this it out. It looks like quite a now. Ooh, that was a cool little presentation. Thick bars at the end of the pipe block the opening to the outside. Extremely hard and solid, I'm afraid. Thick bars at the end of the... In the distance, the other end of this tunnel fades out of sight among the shadows. Hmm. Where does it lead? In the distance. Hmm. A few yards away, I can see a great mass of trash, mud, and plant matter that accumulated in there in the years since this water outlet was last cleaned. Ugh. Even from here, I can smell the stench coming from inside. It's going to be some, like, oozes in here. A few yards away. That Ugh. Let's go, uh, you know. Let's do what I do. Spittoon diving. Impossible. It's beyond my reach. The bars are keeping me from getting there. Okay, Joker. Fine. Let's come over here and check this little ridiculousness out. It's a charred remains of a tree trunk. 
fighting to keep from being devoured by the enormous hole in the ground. For the moment, it's holding its own. It seems firmly rooted in the soil. It's a charred rem for the moment. Hmm. This hole in the ground is steep walls of mud and earth. The distance to the bottom is several yards. How the hell was this cesspit formed? Hmm. This hole the dis Hmm. The edges of this hole are quite slippery and unstable. Better not get too close. Hmm. It looks like there are some chiseled stone structures sticking out of the water. What are they? The remains of columns, perhaps? And what are they doing sunk here in the middle of nowhere? Hmm. It seems like a small fragment of one of them is loose. They're rammed pillars! It looks like there are some ch and Hmm. I can't reach it from here. Maybe I should find a way to get to the bottom of this enormous hole first. I suppose the rain has been flooding the pit little by little. This water is so dark you can't even see the bottom. I suppose the rain- This water- Well... Okay. Previously rammed. So, I enter the city. Ooh. It welcomes me with its most merciless and bitter grimace. What I see before my eyes is not what I expected. Doomsday made it here, too. Yeah, what a shock. Even if no one in the refugee camp knows it yet. Damn it. The city looks as bruised and battered by the catastrophe as the rest of us. No shit. Act 2, Doomsday City. I'm gonna need those, pal. A lot of dodgy shit here. Beechwood Oracle. Hmm. I said... Hmm. This is an interesting game. I think the premise of it seems cool. I kind of wish there was more, you know, like more choice where you could do things different ways. Um, but that's often the case in these adventure games when there's only one way to do things. But still. In this particular setting, it seems pretty interesting. It seems like there's a lot of moving parts. Things that you could, you know interact with or make choices in different ways but that's of course not really an option in this but it is intriguing i wouldn't say the game is good so far i mean i, I wouldn't use a a bold word like good but uh i find the premise and setting intriguing enough that i want to find out you know what what's going on i want to find out what happened and and what's going to happen. Keep getting caught up in family stuff? That's cool, Splode. It's understandable. Um, I feel like it could be about time to click a link. <laughs> um, I kind of want to, like, get some pizza or something. <sighs> yeah, find out if we ever get to an army base or something. Yeah. Could be time to click a link. I'm not sure. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call it quits for Dead Synchronicity Tomorrow Comes Today for now. We'll play some more of it in a little while. But um, if you... If you're watching on YouTube, I was going to do it for this first episode. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Dead Synchronicity. Tomorrow comes today.